Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Dong Yun Lee from Stony Brook University. Today, I'm going to talk about the metrics for sustainability in data center. And this is joint work with Anshul, uh, Jianghua, Shuai, Erez from Stony Brook University, and Kanad, Kartik, and David from the Binghamton, and Shed uh, from Penn State, and Patrick from the University of Wisconsin. Okay. All right. Um, let me just repeat the main things over here. So basically, uh, with increasing use of the, let's say, the resource intensive workload like big data analytics, uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and cryptocurrencies, this big uh, data center sustainability has now become a real problem now. And um, unfortunately, the most solutions that we have designed to actually maintain or manage the data centers and software development in particular uh, remain focused on the power and energy consumptions. But as we all, uh, as we all discussed over the, throughout this today, uh, today's talk, sustainability actually goes beyond the en energy, right? So we need to consider the operational carbon emissions and embodied carbon emissions and, and the other, other indirect costs as well, including waters and device wear and tear and so on. So, um, so as a very first step to actually uh, enable this sustainable computing, we believe that the first thing that we need to do is really define the metrics. Um, if we cannot measure it, then well, perhaps we can improve it, right? So um, today I'm going to just talk about and basically answer this question that what should we measure, right? Um, ideally, this sustainability metric should be holistic and comprehensive. Uh, you know, capturing not only the operational, let's say the carbon footprint, but also the embodied carbon footprint. And at the same time, it should be granular. It should allow us to actually capture um, the sustainability cost at different granularity, um, let's say starting from the very small single job to the entire data center as well, and disputed and easy to measure and so on. Uh, but unfortunately, the existing metrics that we are playing with um, we have been playing with our fall short and then, then actually motivate the need for the new, new metrics over here. The popular power use, uh, the efficiency PUV, indeed it ignores the, the energies uh, like a source cleanliness information and the newer, let's say the CUE, carbon use efficiency CUE accounts for energy cleanliness, but it's not granular. Um, we cannot actually collect the information for less each individual single job or and so on, right? So the sustainability carbon intensity SCI metric actually tracks the emissions for per, let's say the functional unit, but it ignores it, let's say the system overhead and also does not really consider, let's say the, the other metrics like um, the quality of services and so on. So we are going to talk about and I'm going to actually present, you know, the couple candidate metrics that we can think of at this point. And then I'm also going to talk about the units uh, beyond, um, let's say the, the, the popular, let's say, the grams of the uh, carbon dioxide equivalent. And then based on those new metrics and the units, I'm going to talk about a uh, couple of use cases and then add some closing thoughts at the end. All right, just to be, let's say, the comprehensive and holistic, our candidate sustainability me metrics are going to consider the following, let's say, the factors. Um, and for units, uh, let's just start with uh, the commonly used um, the carbon uh, dioxide, uh, the equivalent unit, uh, or uh, the CO2, uh, CO2E, right? Um, and the very first factor that we are going to consider is basically the operational sustainability costs that actually are going to be consumed by the equipment when we are actually providing the service at the data center level. And of course, you should include the idle energy and the delivery losses and so on. And in, in, in order to actually capture this carbon footprint or the sustainability cost uh, more properly, uh, we are going to consider the energy source cleanliness as well uh, by when we are converting the energy to the carbon footprint, we are going to consider different carbon intensity values. Because today of the talk, we actually learned that these are indeed a varying factor, but let's assume that uh, this is a constant for different sources of energy. For example, in order to produce one kilowatt hours of uh, let's say the energy from the solar sources, let's say um, the, it requires, uh, it, it, it incurs like a 48 uh, grams of the CO2, CO2E, uh, let's say the units, um, which is only going to be 5% of the, like the energies or the electricity produced by the core. Okay? So we are going to actually con uh, consider those two different, let's say the units uh, to actually consider, uh, co to compute the, the, um, the energy, for, uh, the carbon footprint more precisely in a more in, uh, like a meaningful manner. And third, we are going to consider the embodied, let's say the, uh, the sustainability cost that is, that is going to be incurred during the life cycle of the equipment, 
starting from let's say the productions and the delivery and so on, right? And so in today's talk, I'm going to mainly focus on those three factors, but our paper actually talk about some details about the other factors that I'm actually listing over here. So for those of you who are interested, please refer to the paper, okay? Let's talk about the operational energy first, right? Um, so in order to, I mean, it is very actually, I mean, it is very critical to uh, um, the capture and the measure the, the operational sustainability cost at the very fine grained level to, to drive more meaningful, let's say, the data center management, uh, let's say, ma management. For example, the job migrations, whether we actually have to, um, let's say, to schedule the job at the one particular point over the other. So what we are actually proposing over here is uh, we actually have to um, derive a very fine-grained and um, um, the, like the, the sustainable metric for a job. For example, let's say a job actually takes like a 20% of the power um, at the, like a host A and B and the more powers on host B. What we are actually interested in is somehow track all those detailed information using some let's say the hardware support like a performance counters or the smart PDUs and so on, and also using some operating system support to actually uh, find out the utilizations of these individual applications or the job so that we can actually keep track of all these detailed informations. And of course, there may be some, let's say the shared, let's say the energies that we need to also account for, for example, virtualizations, and there might be some uncounted, let's say the powers that we actually have to equally distribute across many different jobs that we are currently running. So once we have this kind of detailed information, what we can do is we can calculate the end-to-end, -end, let's say sustainability, I mean, operational sustainability cost for a particular job, for example, by just simply summing up these energy uses by, across this different, uh, let's say the data center hardwares and the networking devices and so on. And then once we calculate those energies uh, for individual job, then what we can do is we can consider different, let's say the carbon intensity values uh, from different like the sources of the, uh, the energy or the electricity. Uh, for example, let's say we have 80% of electricity coming from the core sources and 20% coming from the solar. Then we can actually compute our, our carbon intensity value to be let's say 66, uh, 666 like this. Um, and then we can actually multiply those values so that we can actually compute this so-called um, the G, um, grams of the carbon dioxide equivalent CO, uh, CO2e values. And this is the, going to be the operational cost that we can consider. And the, basically the key message over here is we really want it to be fine grained at the same time. We want to consider this energy cleanliness information. And then let's talk about this uh, embodied cost, right? So embodied cost is associated with, you know, the whole life cycle of the individual device. We've been discussing, let's say, the manufacturing, delivery, distributions and disposals and the recycle and everything. So when we actually can, if we can somehow collect those numbers, what we can do is we can amortize those, uh, like the cost over uh, equipment lifetime and also considering the uses time and the utilization of individual job so that we can indeed charge individual job uh, or the, the, like the data center, like the workload um, based on its, its uses and the utilization and the life cycle or lifetime of this equipment. But we wanted to actually point out that when we were actually trying to collect these informations, it was very actually hard to obtain this embodied like a cost. Um, many of these many of these informations are indeed a pro, a proprietary, and indeed there are actually multiple vendors in the supply chain, and it was fairly hard to obtain. So there are actually a small number of the data sets that are, that are publicly available, and I think many any information has been has been shared throughout this, today's Slack channels and so on as well. And I think that is a very uh, interesting research question and an open question is whether we can actually use this publicly available data and then if indeed exploit, exploit uh, the estimate for the old data center equipment. And I would think, expect that this will be a very interesting research question to answer. All right, so based on, let's assume that we can collect this fine grained, let's say the energy uses and the, uh, the energy source cleanliness and the, uh, the carbon intensity values very precisely. And let's say we can also even consider uh, collect this um, um, the embodied as carbon footprint and reformation. Then what we can do is we can now start defining the metrics that we wanted to optimize for. And here are the couple candidates that I would like to present today. So the first one is job sustainability cost. Uh, we call it as a JC, uh, JSC, which is indeed equivalent to the operational sustainability cost. 
So we can calculate the, the, the total energy and then we can, uh, calcul uh, we can also consider some additional energies for the coolings and so on and the energy source cleanliness uh, information so that we can eventually collect this, let's say, uh, for example, let's say 0.2 grams of the CO2E, right? And the, based on this information, and then we can also consider um, the second metrics like amortized uh, sustainability costs, let's say, which we call it as ASC, which actually indeed includes the, um, the embodied, uh, in, embodied uh, sustainability cost. So uh, let's say we actually use that job for five hours and then let's the life cycle, lifetime of that equipment is let's say five, three years, then we can amortize that. And what we can do is we can calculate the value and then we can eventually say that, okay, it is 0 0.22. So the delta between these two numbers actually captures the, the job's responsibility for this, uh, let's say the embodied sustainability cost, which is going to be 0 0.02, right? And then once we have this kind of information, now we can actually think about the optimization function. We may actually want to optimize or joint optimize this, both the carbon, uh, the footprint information or the sustainability cost and the QoS, the quality of services together, right? So what we can do is we can now actually think about the, like the, the unit that we can collect for, let's say the, the given time units, because we are basically interested in so-called like a cost rate over here. So for example, we can think about the, like the, the, uh, the metrics, what we call uh, job quality per cost rate, where we divided the QS by uh, the elective time and the, um, the, the uh, uh, multi sustainability cost. What we can eventually get over here is something like a job is going to produce, like can handle 900 purchases of transactions for a given time unit, let's say for an hour, and a one grams of the CO2E. And what we are actually interested in is maximizing this, let's say the metrics over here, or even finding out the, some, uh, trying to draw some palette curve and then find out where is the optimal point that we wanted to reach at, right? So these are the candidate sustainable metrics. And, and I believe that we, we, we need to come up with a, um, the metrics that are fine grained and at the same time, uh, consider I mean, the, basically the end-to-end -end metrics and the variable factors, and of course the, the QS factors all together so that we know that what we are actually optimizing for. So um, these are the sustainability metrics that I would like to actually discuss today. And then now I also wanted to talk about the units a little bit more. So far, I have actually assumed that uh, we are actually going to use the units of let's say, the carbon-based unit, basically CO2E. Um, and I just want to first wanted to point out that the existing carbon-based unit actually is ignoring many important factors. For example, carbon emissions associated with the diesel backups or um, the, associated with uh, the chemicals and solvent for the advanced cooling solutions. So we, we, we really need to actually find out what are the all the factors that we actually need to consider in order to actually calculate the CO2 numbers correctly. But more importantly, I wanted to actually point out the second points that I wanted to make is that the carbon units are not, may not be very intuitive to actually promote this in, um, incentivization. So what I'm trying to say over here is, you know, users may not actually cares about, you know, the carbon footprint, right? So how can we, I mean, what does it mean by, let's say, the introducing 2.5 grams of the CO2 emissions when I actually submit my job to the data center, right? So, uh, I'm just actually, uh, we are just proposing one idea like over here that what if we actually try to uh, provide some complementary, let's say the unit that are main space, basically the moment monetary units over here. Because again, um, dollars are maybe it's easy to understand. I'm not really saying that dollar is everything, but I'm just saying that in order to actually in, uh, involve the users into our sustainability, you know, the efforts, we may actually wanted to think about what is the right units to actually use to promote this, uh, the sustainability uh, and so on. So basically, um, we, we wanted to actually talk about this dollar units and to see whether this is the right metrics or, oh, sorry, right units to actually report those metrics and so on. And, um, and we were also curious about uh, whether dollar or the monetary units may be easier for us to even approximate this so-called embodied, uh, let's say sustainability cost instead of the CO2 numbers. And it may be also be a good unifying unit when we talk about both, let's say the carbon uh, like emissions and the methane emissions and so on. 
yeah, because we can actually convert everything into a single unit. So that may be actually easier. And we've been already actually using, let's say, the carbon credits and so on. So this is not a new concept, and people have tried to actually understood, uh, understand how this economic let's say, model actually works. But at the same time, I wanted to also point out that there are challenges over here, how we can actually convert this carbon into so-called like a dollars. Um, this is not, this economic model is not very trivial. And then uh, when it becomes more complex, when we talk about, um, let's say the international interactions as well. So we need to actually think of, um, this is something that I did believe is the uh, open question. And then there will be a great uh, collaboration opportunity with uh, the economists and the, like the computer scientists over here as well. So based on this matrix and the units that we are proposing over here, we can actually enable multiple use cases. So the one example and what I've been actually promoting over here is what is the right ways to, let's say, the incentivize users? What is the right ways to involve the users into our whole sustainability effort? If we can provide this very fine grained, uh, let's say, the sustainability metric for the users, let's say the user can actually observe the sustainability, quality, uh, sustainability cost for the user's job, then they may be able to actually run some, some form of, let's say, the what if analysis, like what if I actually run this job at this particular location? What if I run this job at a different amount, different time zone and, or different locations? That will definitely allow them to actually, uh, let's say, to negotiate those, uh, the effort with the, the, the cloud vendors or the, the, uh, the data center service vendors and then there may be some col uh, collaborative effort over here and opportunities as well. And this monetary bandit metrics may actually lead to these incentives and some, um, in, um, so for example, the users can actually get some, um, let's say the credits when they actually participated in this, um, participate in this um, the sustainability effort. So these are the one, uh, let's say the use case that we can think of when we have this very fine grained and the monetary, let's say the units and metrics as well. And the second one is, well, we've been also thinking about beyond the users, how the software stack or the software development cycle should be changed um, in order to make the software become more, or the, let's say data center applications become more sustainable. Um, the very first thing that we are all aware of is that so software basically need to be aware of the sustainability cost from the beginning. And then the so so uh, software designer can actually think about or exposing more tuning knobs or let's say the, uh, the opportunity for the users or the, um, the cloud, even the cloud vendors to actually change the parameters of the applications so that they can actually become more sustainable and then uh, achieve, let's say, uh, and basically op uh, optimize the metric that we've been proposing, like um, keeping the like the QS level, like the higher uh, at a given um, the sustainability cost. So um, we, uh, the software designer can now start talking about um, what is the like the carbon footprint implications when we actually use uh, heterogeneous, um, let's say, the, the, the resources. Um, and what, how, how should I actually set uh, my, let's say the replication factors when we talk about the fault tolerance, uh, fault tolerant distributed system design. So, so far we've been actually talking about this one in terms of the availability and the throughputs only, but what we are actually proposing is here, um, the sustainability metric should be also included into the, this design decision, uh, let's say the process. So the clothing thought over here is that um, data centers sustainability metric must look beyond power and energy as we all uh, champion for. Um, and this metrics must be holistic and then it allows us to capture at a different granularity. And uh, we, are, um, we are actually arguing they should be at the very fine grained level as well. As well. And, um, and, and in today's talk, I actually presented a couple of candidate uh, metrics as the very first step but um, you're throughout this talk, I also talk about a couple you know, the challenges as well. For example, um, we need to actually promote like more public data uh, for our embedded course so that we as a whole understand, as a, as a community understand what is the end-to-end the, the -end sustainability cost for running this data center. And, um, and there are many other open questions which we actually haven't discussed, but um, how can we actually verify the actually the numbers and the metrics that the cloud, let's say the vendor is reporting is definitely 
trustworthy or not, and how we can actually involve the users into our uh, account, uh, uh, involving users into our sustainable efforts, and whether this monetary units can actually help that, or is it going to be um, just um, um, it, it just distract them. That's going to be an interesting uh, question, and then I, I, I hope that our research community is going to actually work on that aspect. All right, uh, that concludes my talk, and I'm happy to take any question. Have you got any questions? Hi, great talk. Um, it occurs to me that some of the you know, understandability of these metrics or the their ability to motivate people, you know, maybe could be explored with some focus groups or from some user studies potentially. So I'm curious if you've thought about doing such things or have done. Yeah, such actually, um, it would be very interesting to do some form of the user study because, um, yeah, I, 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 but what I'm, what I'm just simply saying is definitely. I mean, this is a very interesting direction because. Um, we understand that, uh, and even including our today's keynote talk, industries are actually working on um, towards this sustainability data center design. And it's not only the data center designer, right? It's also the software developers and operators. So in order to actually understand their needs and their, what is the actual, uh, the motivations uh, or what, what is the, like the driving factors those are the things that I think definitely the user study can actually help us to understand and then we can actually jointly optimize for. Um, hi, I'm Jen Switzer, I'm a student here. Um, I was wondering if you have thought about taking into account idle power into the cost Yeah, so per that's job. something that we are currently assuming that we are going to equally distribute to the, uh, I mean, when, when, it, when it comes to the, the per job, let's say the accounting for those idle powers and something that, um, um, that we cannot really precisely account for. And we, uh, I think it, at this point, we are just simply naively assume that we are going to equally dispute, equally charge the users um, or the jobs at the same, same amount. But with more fine grains instrumentation, especially for virtualizations and all those efforts, I think uh, there must be uh, more, you know, the effort in instrumenting things more in a precise manner so that we can charge it more pro precisely. Thank you. Any more questions for Dong Yoon? <laughs>